Okay, in this video, we're gonna go over how to hold the bow, which is the most difficult part of playing the fiddle. Would you guys agree? Yeah. So it, it's gonna feel really awkward when I'm holding it. It looks easy and natural, <laughs> but it's totally not. So if you feel really awkward about the things I'm gonna tell you to do with your hand, then you're doing it right. Um, how do you guys feel now that you've been playing for a little bit? Do you feel less awkward about the bow? Less awkward. Less awkward? Still a little Still awkward? Still a little awkward, but less. Okay. I feel like about 80% of the time I'm holding it incorrectly. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. So we're feeling pretty bad about the bow. Yeah, what about yeah. you, Brian? I'm just an awkward person in general. Okay. <laughs> so we're all feeling awkward about the bow. So anyway, um, we're going to start with pointing our bow, I'll try not to poke anyone, um, to the right hand side with your hair up. So you have that frog in front of you. You don't want to touch the hair at all with your fingers because the oils from your, your hands will get on there and then your bow will not accept any rosin. So you want to make sure that you don't touch the hair of the bow except for down near the frog. You're going to imagine that you have a little dot on the tip of your thumb you're going to, so if I took a marker and put a dot there, it'd be on the very tip up to my nail. Imagine that little polka dot, and then you're gonna put your thumb on the thumb pad and cover the dot. And you're gonna bend the thumb into the hair. So this is not, for cello, you're a little bit different. So for um, if you're watching the cello, um, and he's not holding that thumb into the hair, that's, it's a whole different instrument, a different animal. But for fiddles, we want to actually touch into the hair. So you're bending in and you want to have like a 90 degree angle into that hair. So that's one of the most important things about playing your instrument is you want that thumb to be flexible. If you lock your thumb out like this, like a banana shape, then the rest of your fingers are going to be stiff as well. And then that stiffness is gonna come out in terms of squeaks and uh, interesting tone on your violin. So, and that's what we all don't want. So we wanna not squeak right away. And so we're gonna just bend that in. Everybody looks really good. Okay. And then the rest of the fingers, just kind of lay them down where you feel, nat you know, it's your natural shape of your hand, really. And so you don't wanna contort your fingers at all. And then you're gonna imagine another dot on the tip of your pinky. So you're gonna put your pinky on top of the bow. And so all of your fingers should be nice and curved. None of your fingers are straight. And then your two middle fingers next to your pinky are gonna cover the frog, okay? So especially the one next to the pinky, if you have a dot on your bow, I have two circles. I don't know why my bow's special, but I have two circles. Usually it's just a solid dot. You're gonna cover that dot with that finger next to your pinky, and then you're gonna have your next finger. It's, it's aiming towards the frog, and then you'll have your index finger uh, it doesn't hook around the bow. It's just kind of laying there. Everything should feel very light. And then we're going to flip our bows over just like this, and you'll feel all the weight go into the pinky. So most people's pinkies fall off when they do this the first time. How are your pinkies? Feeling pretty good? Okay. And so on cello, once again, the pinky uh, hangs off. So don't look at the cello for this fiddle hold. And so this is a great thing to practice at home to strengthen your pinky, just windshield wipers. Um, when you're watching Netflix, this is a great thing to do. You also wanna have little spaces in between your fingers. And the biggest space uh, is between your index finger and your next finger over. So you, this is kind of like your throttle. If you want a pretty loud sound, you can move that finger up on the stick like this. and softer down here. Okay, so you also wanna just make sure that it's not like a claw. So you want your wrist to be really loose and able to you know, move your wrist and your bow at the same time. Everybody's got a good hold. Yeah, you're doing it right. Awesome, okay. So that's the bow and it feels pretty awkward when you're first playing. So just give yourself a lot of um, 
exercise is another thing that's kind of fun is just to get dexterity in your fingers is going all the way up to the tip of your bow. You, yeah, like a spider on your bow. We used to do this um, in Suzuki class when I was a kid growing up. And then coming down on the bow. Yeah, that's harder. <laughs> I'm not even up. It's a good finger dexterity exercise. And so once you get, I just cheated, I'm gonna get all the way down to the bottom, just finding that hold again and making sure that your wrist is nice and loose. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna learn how to bow. So we wanna go um, straight with the bridge. So we're just parallel to the bridge. Um, and we play in between the bridge and the fingerboard. So we really have five highways here where the bow could be. And so if this is highway one right next to the bridge, and then this is highway five, we wanna stay in highway three or four. So when you get to the bridge, it gets uh, pretty squeaky and you could get this tone. I'll just go ahead and do it. So it doesn't sound uh, very resonant and it sounds like we're not getting into the tone. Um, that's actually called um, Ponticello which um, they use a lot in horror movies. So if you hear you know, an old horror movie and the violins are um, going crazy, they're usually playing near the bridge. So we wanna keep away from that. And then on the fingerboard, things get pretty muffled. So sometimes I'll intentionally move my bow to the fingerboard just to make it really soft. But let's just stay right in the middle. So let's start with our A string. So the A string is not the string on the outside of your instrument. It's the second string over. It's the and <laughs> in our phrase, eat and drink grapes. And so let's start near the wrapping, the part of the bow that's the metal. Okay, and we're gonna draw the bow all the way to the tip and try to be as straight as possible. And so that's called a down bow because we moved our arm down. And let's do an up bow from the tip to the wrapping. Good. So you'll notice that things get pretty squeakier, squ pretty squeakier, they get squeaky <laughs> near the frog. So it's good to practice trying to play near the frog and get it smoothed out. But usually fiddle music, when, especially the fast stuff, we're gonna stay in the middle of the bow. So down here, we have all the weight of our hand into the string and it's pretty heavy, so we have to be light. So you get that. Then near the tip of the bow, we sometimes lose our tone. So we have to adjust our index finger on the bow and press in a little bit more to get that nice resonant tone. Okay, so let's try it again, where we're just, let's do five long bows. So starting at the wrapping, here we go, play. Good, two, three, four, and five. Awesome, and let's play an E. So yeah, you could play D1 if you want to do a bass note for us. So let's do our E. So on this one, our elbow is going to be close to our side. So it's not going to be up out here. So just relax everything. Here we go. Five on E. One. Let's go to our D string. Dangerous D, the hardest one to balance on. Good luck, guys. Ready, play. Good. And then we're gonna do G. So the elbow is always gonna be a little bit lower than the wrist, so we don't wanna be like this for G. So you really um, expose your armpit here for the, the G string. And we'll do the same thing on G with elbows up. Everybody looks great. 
Robin, you could go a little bit higher even. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Here we go. Ready, play. <laughs> One thing about the bow, if I said you need to be pretty straight, but one thing that you could do is angle your bow so that the tips going away from your head, that's okay. Like I'm not lo losing a lot of tone from doing that kind of crooked playing. The problem is, is when we have the tip pointed behind our head, even just slightly, we lose some of the tone. So if you find that's happening, just open up here and that will bring your arm back. So you bring, pull your arm and your shoulder back and that will help prevent that from happening. Do you guys have any questions? All right, I'll see you in the next video.